Good to be here. Good to be in the presence of the Lord. It's a, it's a wonderful spirit here this morning. Amen. Amen. Y'all have the best songs. I tell you, y'all just, y'all just have some of the greatest songs. Hey, you don't, I don't hear them anywhere else I go, but uh, I love them. And I just praise the Lord. They just put you in a praise mood. And we just, all me and Connie both just comment on how beautiful the music is here and how much we enjoy it. And um, uh, God bless you for inviting us. And uh, we uh, heard from your pastor yesterday, and he's, he's on the way home, so uh, uh, praise the Lord. And uh, did you see him on the Facebook? Look, he looked worse on there than he does at home, doesn't he? <laughs> You can tell him I said that. Me, me and him have been good friends for a long time. And uh, speaking of friends, I'm glad to see Charles here today, Charles Howard. He's been a friend of mine for years, and I'm just glad to hear he came back to the Lord. And uh, we worshiped together, and uh, time passed, and went to school together, and uh, we've known each other about all our lives. And uh, good to see Charlie. God bless you, Charlie. And hang in there now, bud. Okay? All right. And... Um, and we're just thankful for the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Saying about this man, he's uh, at cemetery. And he was pounding on the grave. And he's saying, oh, I wish you hadn't died. I wish you hadn't died. I said, I'd be the happiest man. If you, if you hadn't died, I'd be so happy. And I wish you hadn't died. And a priest come along, chaplain, somebody, a preacher. And uh, said, uh, is that someone special? He said, special? He said, are you thinking, you think he's not special? said, he's really special. Said, he said, well, who is he? He said, he was my wife's ex-husband. <laughs> He'd have been a lot happier if he hadn't died. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I, 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 I tell you, I like good, good humor and... Uh, Connie always gets still with good jokes and <laughs> gets to tell them beforehand. Um, but I beat her to that one. Amen. <laughs> if you would stand with me, please, for the reading of God's Word. Turn to John chapter um, a 9. Very familiar story with us all. And, uh, but the Word of God never gets old. Never gets old. It's always there. It's always got some truth in it. I want to read two verses out of the ninth chapter, uh, 24 and uh, 25. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner, talking about Jesus, or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Amen. I know one thing. I, I know I was blind, but now I can see. Hallelujah. And we all can say that that's saved in here. I was blind spiritually, but now I can see. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a glory. That there's enough to go home with. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And um, if you, you may be seated, but keep your Bibles open to that chapter because I'm going to be calling your attention to several, uh, well, several scriptures all the way through it. And um, this man uh, here was born blind. Now, a lot of you all know that um, I have a brother that's blind. And uh, he's um, a ver little more fortunate than this man was. My brother could see up until he's in his 20s. And then he started losing his eyesight and went legally blind. And uh, now um, he, uh, uh, he just totally blind. And, uh, but he's, he's a marvelous man. But the thing is, that what, what advantage he had over this man, this man was born blind. He'd never seen anything. But Larry had 22, 20 some years that he had saw things. He, could, he, he remembers colors. I can talk to him. I said, Larry, that's blue. You understand? I'm talking, yeah. And that's green. Yeah. 
And uh, Eden, it remembers shapes like uh, what a tree looks like, what a car looks like, what a, a house looks like. He, he knows those things, and, and so you can relate to him about those things. This man here had never seen any of those things. He had never seen color, never seen shapes or nothing. He had seen absolutely nothing. He was born blind. And we find that um, um, we find the, uh, that when they, Jesus came, and they came by to, and was going to pass by this man and his disciples, and his disciples said, uh, Lord, uh, this man here, who sinned? Did he sin or did his parents sin that he's born blind like this? And Jesus said uh, to them, neither, but that uh, 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 God's glory may be revealed in him. Neither his parents nor his, uh, himself sin. A lot of people think, and there, there's, there was... Uh, uh, Back in that day, the Jewish believed that uh, a lot of the sickness came uh, from uh, sin. If you, if the, it was a, a judgment upon you. There's a lot of people think that today. There's people that teach that around today. If you got some kind of sickness, then it must be that you got some kind of sin and that you sinned. And that's why you got sickness on you. But, that, but that's not true. That's, that's not always true. And there are times that we, that we sin that brings on sickness. Uh, I know if we uh, drink too much, uh, drink any at all, <laughs> drink, drink too much, become an alcoholic, and then you become an alcoholic and then it, it destroys cells in your body and makes you, makes you sick. Smoking, another thing, overeating, another thing, it can cause uh, sickness in your body. And uh, that, and uh, the, we know these things. But this man here had no no uh, sin. Uh, he could not have sinned and uh, been cursed with it with blindness because he, he was born blind. And then his parents never sinned, Jesus said, but that God could be glorified. And we know that um, this uh, man was there and uh, we see that uh, some of them said it is uh, in verse 8, uh, we find the scripture that says, uh, again, um, that in, in verse 8 it says, let me, get, let me get the right chapter. I'm in chapter 8. And, uh, and he said in verse 8, uh, Therefore the neighbors uh, of the, those who preceded had seen that he was blind, said, It is not this he who said, uh, and beg, begged, and some said that is an others. He is like him. It's not him. He's like the others. He said, "I am him." Is this? He said, "I am him." Some said, "This is not him that was uh, uh, sitting uh, begging," but he said, uh, "That just looks like him. Someone that looks like him." But he says, "I'm him. I'm him. I, I know I'm him." I know I was blind, but now I see. And he says, I'm the one that was uh, uh, blind, and, uh, and uh, it was Jesus that healed me. And then in verse 10, it says, uh, uh, this is uh, pointing out in here of all the questions that's in this chapter. There's many questions in here. That's, that's what I'm pointing out to you today. In verse 10, how was his eyes opened? And, and uh, they find that uh, the verse 10, that they said to him, how, how then was your eyes opened? And he said, uh, a man named Jesus. He said he put, uh, made uh, uh, clay out of, out of spittle. He spit on the ground and mixed it up and uh, the uh, clay, the dirt and the, and the uh, uh, spittle and rubbed it on my eyes, made clay and told me to go wash in the, in the pool of Siloam. And he said, I did that. And I came seeing. I saw after that. My eyes were open and I could see. It was Jesus that done it. Hallelujah. And then uh, verse 12, it says another question there. Then they, uh, they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know where he's at. I don't know. He, he, he healed my eyes, but I don't know where he's at. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure where he's at. I don't know. And then in verse um, 15, it says, 
The Pharisees said, how did you receive your sight? He told them how Jesus did it. How that Jesus made the clay, put it on his eyes, told him to go wars, and he was healed. And then they said, well, uh, uh, that here we find in verse 16, how can a sinner do this? How can a man that is a sinner, how can he do this miracle like this? This is a tremendous miracle. And how did he do it? How could he, as being a sinner, do this? And do, do, uh, he did it on the Sabbath day. And that made him, they said he, he couldn't have, certainly couldn't have been of God. He couldn't have been of the Lord because he uh, had done this on the Sabbath day. And we know that he broke the law of the Sabbath and therefore he is a sinner. <laughs> the other day we went on vacation and um, I guess, sorry to tell this, Aunt Connie, <laughs> and <laughs> we went on vacation down at the beach and we, we was coming back and my granddaughter was sitting and she said let's play a game and it was um, you hold up ten fingers and you say um, I'm uh, I have not anyway I have not I'm not done this sin I've not done this and then if you've, if you've done it, you have to put your finger down. And she was talking about, said, I've never drank any beer. And uh, so I put my finger down. Papa, you drank beer? And she said, Are you, you're a sinner. <laughs> and she went on talking and said something about smoking. I put a finger down. Papa, you smoke too? What else did you do? You know? <laughs> And uh, so um, she called me a sinner. So here, Jesus, because he healed on the Sabbath day, they said he was a sinner. And a sinner surely couldn't do this thing. It, it, it's, uh, he's not of God. If he's a sinner, he couldn't have healed this man like that. And then in verse 17 it says, What do you say about this man? What do you say about him? Talking to the blind man. What do you say? He said, he's a prophet. He's a prophet, and certainly Jesus was a prophet and more. But he was a prophet, and that's what this man said about him. He said uh, he was a, he's a, a prophet. Uh, Jews didn't believe he, he was the one that was blind. He called his parents, and they said to them in verse 19, Is this your son who was born blind? And in also that chapter, another question, How... How does he see? And they said, well, this is our son that was born blind. And we know, and uh, he definitely was born blind. He's our son. But how he sees, I don't know. We don't know how he sees. You have to ask him. He's of age, ask him. See, they was afraid because they had, had said that the Pharisees had said anyone that said that Jesus was Christ, they would be kicked out of the, uh, out of the synagogue. And so therefore they, they was uh, fearful. So they said, ask him. He's, he's of age and he'll tell you. And so we find that um, as they, uh, uh, how did they, uh, they asked him, the Jews uh, said, give God the glory. This man's a sinner. Call him a sinner again. And then he answers that question. He says, he answers whether he's a sinner or not. I do not know. I don't know whether he's a sinner. I'm not sure he's a sinner. I don't know about that. But there's one thing I do know. I once was blind and now I see. Hallelujah. Can you think about that? Being blind and now seeing. And think about when you were saved. How that you was blind in spiritual sin. And then you begin to see things clear. You begin to see about God. And you begin to see the things of God. It seemed like that the, that the grass took on a greener uh, 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 color. It seemed like the trees were so much better. The mountains looked so much better. Everything looked so much better because you, your eyes were spiritually open and you saw. You could see the things of God. And then uh, he answered, that, that was his answer. Now I see. I don't know whether he's a sinner or not, 
but now I see. And then in verse 26, uh, A there, it says, what did he do to you? And then it also, uh, the uh, uh, 26B says, how did he open your eyes? What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he said, I've already told you. How did he open my eyes? Uh, you want me to tell you again? Why do you want to hear it again? I've told you what he done. He spit on the ground, made clay, put it on my eyes, told me to go wash, and then I came seeing. And, and then we find in verse 27, do you want to become his disciple? This was the blind man asking the Pharisees. Do you want to become a disciple of Jesus? They'd already said there's disciples of Moses and they didn't want to be a disciple of Jesus. He's been, I think, a little bit sarcastic here. And he's saying, you want to be his disciple? You can be if you want to be. Ain't it great you can be the disciple of the Lord? And when they uh, uh, heard this, they said, are you teaching us? You're born in sin. And, you're, you, and they cast him out. They put him out of the, out of the, out of the uh, synagogue. And they cast him out. And then in verse 35 it says, Do you believe in the Son of God? What happened here? Jesus heard that he was being cast out. Well, see, they cast, and if you go up there in chapter 8, they cast Jesus out. They rocked him out. They was throwing stones at him. And he uh, went among them and slipped out around them and, uh, and, and got away from them. But they was trying to stone him because it's casting him out. And when Jesus heard about this blind man being cast out, uh, Jesus went and he found him. Oh, glory to God. Think about that. When they were cast out, that Jesus will come looking for us. Jesus knows about the casting out. He knows about sinners. He loves sinners. He loved the outcast. And he went and found this man. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of God? Do you believe in him? And he said to him, said Jesus, I uh, said to him in verse 36, he, or he said to Jesus, who is, who is he, Lord? You, you, and Jesus said to him, this is this statement, you have seen him, you have seen him. Hallelujah. You can see him right now. And you're talking with him right now. He says, and then he says, uh, uh, and as he talked with him, Lord, I believe. And he fell down and began to worship Jesus. He says, I believe. You open my eyes. You're my Lord. I accept you as the Son of God. I believe in you. Oh, thank God that we can believe in Jesus Christ and have a personal relationship with him. Hallelujah. We can know him and he can know us. And we can have that personal relationship with him and enjoy his presence, enjoy his blessings, enjoy him and he enjoys us. Glory to God. In verse six, uh, uh, four, uh, 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 14, or 40, I'm sorry. And he said, are we also blind? And this is the Pharisees. And they said to Jesus, are we, are we uh, blind also? They'd heard this what this man had said and what Jesus said, that heard this conversation about Jesus being Lord. And he said, are we blind? And the, then Jesus said, these words spoken between the, uh, uh, the Jesus and the man, you, you, your sin remains because you say we see. They said we, we see, and they think that they're, they're uh, spiritually, but they were spiritually blind. They didn't realize it. Spiritual blindness is so much worse than physical blindness. And these Pharisees were spiritually blind. And they couldn't uh, comprehend what Jesus was, was uh, telling this man. And they would not comprehend that Jesus was the Son of God. But Jesus said, He, I am He. I am He. Glory to God. And this man had said and declared... I once was blind, but now I see. Glory to God. That's a great testimony. And that's my testimony tonight, today. I was blind, but now I see. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a great testimony that is to know that you're blind. I've seen my brother go to the altar many times to be prayed for, to be healed. He was never, he's never been healed. And sometimes we question that. Why with the faith that he has that he don't get healed? But he's marvelous in the things that he does. I, I get amazed at him. I, I am so amazed at him. And he has a spiritual understanding. He loves the Lord. And I'll tell you what, you get him in a service like we had here this morning and get singing and talking about the Lord and stuff like that, his resurrection, he love will come off that pew, dance all over this church. <laughs> He, he just, he loves the Lord and has a, a great love for God. Always has. Ever since I've known him, he's been a Christian. Ricky's mother and daddy used to take him to church uh, back when none of us went. But now we're all serving the Lord. Our whole family is. God opened our eyes so that we could see. I remember the night that God saved me and opened my eyes and that I could see and I became uh, uh, able to see, and it says, I once was blind, but now I see. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. What a privilege it is to serve the Lord. And if you don't know the Lord, and if you don't know Him today, then you can accept Him right now in your heart. Will you stand with me, please? Hallelujah. I don't know all of you in here this morning. And I don't know whether all of his Christians or not. There's two people that know, and that's God and you. You know whether you are in relationship with the Lord this morning. You know whether you have that personal relationship like you should have. And if you're here this morning and you don't have that personal relationship, do you, do you believe that Jesus was the Son of God? Will you believe on him as Lord of your life? And accept him and do like this young man did. Worship him. Will you become his follower? Will you do that today? Will you become his disciple? Let us pray. Father, you know the hearts of every person here this morning. You know, oh God, who is blind in their spiritual sense. And you know, God, how to speak to their heart. And God, help them this morning to realize that how much you love them and that you gave your life on the cross of Calvary, that they may have eternal life. And your desire is to have a relationship with them, and for them to have a relationship with you. And Father, I pray that God this morning, that you would speak to their hearts, and they would make that decision today. Help them to realize that God, they're living in uh, spiritual darkness. That Lord, their eyes are closed. If they don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But Lord, right now, when you, like you've done that man, you made that spittle, spittle and mud and mixed it together and rubbed it on his eyes and told him to go wash in the pool. Oh, Father, you can do that this morning to those that's here that's blind. And God, speak to their hearts and help them, Lord, to come and accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. If you're here this morning, while every head remains bowed, every eye closed, if you're here this morning and you say, I'm not a Christian, I'm not saved, but I want, to, I want to be before I die. I want to give my heart to Jesus before I die. Will you just lift your hand up and take it right back down so I can pray for you. I just want to pray for you. I'm not trying to trick you. Is there anyone here that you say, I'm, I'm not a Christian. I don't know the Lord. And I would like to die, before I die, I'd like to give my heart to Jesus. I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to be lost. But will you pray for me, Pastor Black? And just slip your hand up and take it right back down, saying, I want your prayers. I want your prayers. Hallelujah. Or you come forward this morning and receive Jesus right now. The altar's open, and you can come. You are able, uh, uh, can come if you want to. If you're here and you don't know the Lord, hallelujah.